Hello, my name is Christine and I run a vintage shop called Queen of Treasures on Etsy. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about antique books. And the reason I wanted to go into it is because, you know, when you go to a lot of estate sales and uh, things like that, you see, you know, people have their lifetime collection of books. And a lot of times these books probably get thrown away because, you know, they'll just be old old paperbacks of romance novels and stuff like that or you know books that have been out of print for a long time may not be entirely accurate anymore sometimes they could be you know useful and valuable but probably most of them are not but the one thing that I think that we can look at and perhaps you know rescue from oblivion is sets of books like this so I have two different ones to, that I wanted to show and interestingly they're both Shakespeare so this set right here is from Yale University it's actually called Yale Shakespeare um, and the covers are blue for some reason the spines are kind of faded and you can't really read what the novel is but it's all as well that ends well and the nice thing about these collections like this is that like this particular one has 40 different books in the group and each one of them is a different Shakespeare play. And so you can build, and surely, you know, those of you who have already put together your Zoom walls are aware that you can get these collections where they all have the, the same color, size, roughly, and all of this. And that way you get kind of a grouping going on your bookshelf. So for those of you who haven't discovered this uh, use of old books, you know, there are definitely sellers on Etsy and eBay who will source these collections like this. And then I know for me personally, I had been selling them as large groups, but you know, some people don't want to make that kind of commitment. So now I'm just selling them per book. So, you know, you can get as many or as few as you want. And in the case of Shakespeare, I feel like that gives you an opportunity to purchase the plays you're familiar with and that you enjoy. And that way you can have like a little mini collection. Like you can see here, I just put five of this one and there's seven of, of this group, which is also, these are antique. So they're a little older, but you know, once you get past the spines, which have been exposed to the elements, you know, the fronts of the books still look quite nice considering, oh, and there's something else I wanted to show later, but uh, you know, the copyright date for this particular book, you can see here, hopefully, 1892 and 1898. So it was originally printed in 1892 and then this printing is 1898. So these are well over 100 years old and for that age they do look pretty darn good. But the other reason I pulled this set of red books out is because we actually ended up not selling these because the person who owned them wrote in some of the books but what she did was she took out clippings of performances and she saved them with the books. So each of these books has basically, I guess what you would consider extra historical documents inside, which, as I said, once we realized what all came with these books, we couldn't actually uh, bear to get rid of them. So you can see she signed it here with her uh, name, the date, and then she, apparently she gifted it later so she put more notes here, but then on this side, she actually taped in a performance in 1912 of this play with the cast list and all of this. So you get some, some extra historical context from this person who basically archived her interactions with each of these plays that she had the book, that, or that she received the book. Let's see if this one has it. Well, it's backwards. That doesn't help. Okay, so here we go. Once again, she's written her own notes in here when she got the book and who she may have passed the book on to. And then she also has, not taped in, but another little performance sheet. So the, that's the fun part of the historical side of these books is that sometimes you find extras and things that tell you a little bit more about the person who owned the book. But the basic premise is that we can save nicer books like this from a landfill or from the recycling bin 
whichever place they end up at when they don't sell. And it gives us something we can add to our book collection that gives it a little bit more, you know, stately authority. You know, if you want something that looks a little bit more classic and elegant, um, but still has, like you can see the wear and tear on these books, definitely gives it a, a lived in. So it doesn't come off too fussy, but you still get a nice kind of aged vibe from it. So, and while we're here, I may as well point out that I stuck my little pirate book in. These are also antique. So if you really wanted to get brave and actually try to get your hands on some fun antique bookends, surprisingly, there are a lot of different subjects in antique bookends. I think they, when they came up with the styles they wanted to do, you know, they did the same thing that we did. They looked at the world around them and said, well, puppies are fun. Let's do puppies, you know, or sexy women are, or we want, that gives us some eye candy to look at. Let's make bookends like that. So there's a lot of art deco or art nouveau um, style women in bookends. So it seems like antique bookends would be kind of stuffy, but a lot of them are not. So if that's all you're finding, you might want to try giving, when you search, a subject like dog, puppy, cat, you know, of various animals. There's a number of different animals that were done as bookends, different uh, kinds of careers, doctors, lawyers, this kind of thing, but plenty of silly theme themes like pirate as well. So, you know, I basically just wanted to talk about this to give you some ideas of things you can do, even if you don't have a big, you know, like wall library in your office, even just having something like this on your desk as a display could be a cool way to, to incorporate old books into your decor. So I hope that gives you something to think about and you learned a little something and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.